In the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, one God, Amen. Um, today is the last Sunday of the month of Abib. And as we, um, as we have been hearing the past few weeks or the past few Sundays, a summary of the readings. The first Sunday, we see Christ sending his disciples and telling them, here I send you like sheep among wolves. We talked about how is this a message that's very unique to Christianity, how we are expected to love everyone, including our enemies, sheep among wolves. St. Augustine says, when the sheep were sent to live among wolves, wolves, wolves eat them. The but the, the interesting thing is that wolves started to turn into sheep. Not by fight, not by force, but by love and convincing. Sheep among wolves. The second week talked about the children of kingdom and the question that the disciples asked Christ, who is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? And how we covered that they didn't really care for the kingdom of heaven that question was really questioning that the kingdom of heaven, it was just they wanted to see who is more superior than the others. And last week we read about the miracle of feeding the multitude. Um, uh, disciples came to Christ and they said to him, uh, let the people, let the crowd go away to find something to eat. And then Christ told them, you give them something to eat. Atuhum antum de akulu. You give them to eat. And then the disciples declared the problem. This is everyone's problem. Every family's problem. When we are told to give our kids to eat, we realize that we have nothing to offer. What we have is not enough. As parents, as servants, what we have is not enough. What we have is just two fish and five loaves of bread. It's not enough for all this. What I know as a father, as a mother, as a servant, is not enough to help me raise my kids the way Christ wants me to raise them. And then when Christ heard that, it was clear that they got the message. Once they said, we don't have enough, then Christ said, just bring me what you have, and I will work with it. That's why every father and mother and every servant who tries to put himself in the center of the scene, his service will fail. Every father and mother try to replace the one and only provider will fail in his mission. I'm just a helper. I am not the provider. He is in the center scene. Always Christ is in the center. I cannot stand in the center of the scene because if I do, I will cover his image and it will be all about me as a father or a mother or a servant and Christ will not appear in the picture. That's dangerous. Later on, I will fall or I will fail and when I fail, my kids look up to me as like, wait, what? What happened? We thought you are the provider. Now the image is broken and they have problems. Their faith might be shaken. But the disciples declared the case and they said, we don't have enough. We don't have enough. And Christ told them, just give me what you have and I will work with it. That was last week. And today, in the, in the gospel, we hear the miracle of Raising Lazarus from the dead. And I'd like to talk to you today about this verse where Christ asked them, where did you put him or where, you lay, where did you lay him down? They said, come and see Lord. Sometimes this is all what we need to say. Come and see. There is not much I can say. I don't have much to explain the situation. I just 
I want you to come and see. Now, in this case, Maryam and Martha were entrusted to take care of their brother, Lazarus, who was sick, and they did every single thing they could have done to take care of him and to care for him. But still he died. Just a quick flashback about the first two weeks and the second two weeks of Abib. The first two weeks, sheep among wolves and, and uh, the second children of kingdom, those two first weeks is talking about self-care, how you should take care of yourself, understand who you are, your message, your purpose. And then the second two weeks is about giving someone to eat and Lord come and see. It's about caring for others. I cannot possibly care for anyone unless I discipline and care myself first. Mariam and Martha, they did everything they could to take care of their brother, and even they sent to Jesus early enough. Some scholars say the distance between Bethany and, and where Jesus was, uh, Jesus would have made it probably a day after Lazarus that died. So it was... A tight window for them. A, a day, like right now, an hour is a tight window. Back in the days, a day was a tight window. People didn't have much grasp of the time understanding. But they, they still did everything they could. Yet Lazarus died. Come and see. Come and see. This is a wonderful invitation to allow Jesus in. Even when it is too late for us. It is too late. Maybe it is too late for us, but for him, no, it's, it's not too late. He can, he can do a lot of things. He just needs to be let in. Invite him in. But why? Why would I, if I know it is too late, why would I ask him to come in? Why would I ask him to come and see what's happening? It's simple. I ask him to do that, or I ask him to come and see and watch the situation, because it's a reflection of our faith in him. I would never discuss any matter with anyone that I know is not going to give me any good insight. Why? Why would I do that? I will only discuss it. I will only talk to those who are able to give me real help, who I know they can help. It's a reflection of our faith. Also, it's a chance to, hum to humble ourselves before him. Remember, uh, the disciples, they came and they approached Christ and the feeding the multitude miracle, and they told him uh, in, in more like an imperative way, send the crowds away. Send them away. We don't have food for this many people. Send them away so they can find something to eat. Then Christ answered back and he said, you give them something to eat. Right? And then they realize at this point, um, I don't have enough. I don't have much to feed them. As we covered earlier. So it's a chance when you say, I don't know. I don't have much. I don't know what to do from here. It's a chance for everyone, either a father or a mother or a servant, to humble yourself. I, I don't know the answer for everything. I don't. I don't. And I'm not scared to say I don't know. Actually, it's a good lesson for your kids to, to tell them sometimes, I'm not sure how to answer this or what to do from here. Let's pray. Let's kneel down before him who knows and provide for all. And let's ask for help. It's a chance to humble ourselves before him. So it's a reflection of our faith. It's a chance to humble ourselves before him. Number three, because his mercy is so great. Even if you think that you consumed all the chances that he has given you, remember that his mercy is so great. He is always willing to give you another chance, always. In the Old Testament, he says, his mercies are so great, 
every morning they are renewed every morning لان مراحمك يا رب هي كل صباح in every morning we have a chance to gain mercy from him number four. As a matter of fact, if you think logically about this, he's the only one that can help. If you think it is too late, then you're probably not wrong. It is too late. Then who can help you? No one can help you. Except the one who controls all. So logically speaking, he's the only one that can help. So if he is the one that can help, why not run to him and ask him, come and see, I have a problem. Regardless, when I say father or mother or servants, you are first entrusted with yourself. And we talked about this before, right? We talked about this, that yourself is like a baby that you grow and you nourish and you take care of and you discipline all the time. Or if you want to take it on your kids, that's also, that's also valid. So whatever the case is, you think you ask him to come and see What's inside of you for him to work with you, that's valid. If you're asking him to come and see what's happening in your house or in your service, that's also valid. He is the one that can help, regardless of how hopeless the case is. I, I, I want to share this with you. We all know that sometimes our houses have similar cases to Lazarus. It's a little, a little too complicated for the parents to help. Sometime our Sunday, uh, Sunday school classes, we have two complicated cases to help, and we think uh, it's too difficult. I don't know how to help. We have a Lazarus here and there. And when we say Lazarus, we don't mean just dead, we mean spiritually sterile. No fruits of the Spirit. Does not bring forth any production. We don't see nothing but bad deeds. But it's not the end of the line. We invite him, we ask him to come and see. Sometimes our kids, and sometimes even us, we come to church, but not to meet with Christ. The biggest picture in the church is for Christ, but sometimes we are so blind that we don't see him. We just won't see other people. We come not to meet with him. We come to meet with others. I'm here to see Fulan and so and so and so. That's, that's dangerous. We come not to say thank you to him. We come to say um, to catch up with others and to follow uh, the, the, what's happening with their lives and to see people. Don't get me wrong. Meeting people, social aspect in, in human's life is very important. It's very important. That's why we have a social hall. But I don't come to church for the social hall. I come to church for this, for, for him, for the body and the blood, to be united with him and to say thank you. It's as simple as it gets. I am not here for any other reasons. The rest is extra. It's not the main reason. Come and see, Lord, because we are out of solutions to fix ourselves or to fix our homes or to fix our service. Come and see. We put it in front of you because we know you can help. Come and see our hearts because they look okay, but they're far from okay. Come and see our houses, our lives, our being, because we need you in every single step. To you is glory forever and ever. And